Hello everyone, Manny Kitzer here and welcome back to another Minecraft video. In today's Minecraft video is actually going to be a little bit different. As you can see that this video is going to be in the playlist Blockbench Tutorials, but it's no longer going to be called Blockbench Tutorial Playlist. It's now going to be Blockbench slash Texture Pack Tutorials. And today is actually the start of a new kind of sort of subject. I'm going to be showing you how to set up the structure of a Minecraft resource pack, how to use it, where things go, and everything sort of like that. So without further ado, let's go onto the desktop so I can actually show you all in depth how to do this. All right, with this video, it's gonna be a little bit based around the Minecraft Wiki texture pack tutorial. Yes, the resource pack tutorial, even on the Minecraft Wiki. I'll link this in the description below, but this talks more in depth on how to create a resource pack, where things are, what you can do, and a lot of other things. And such as the pack that MC meta for the game to be read as a texture pack. So we can copy and paste this later on. And also shows on what pack format we can replace the number with, and it shows what versions it's compatible with. And for today, we're gonna to be using 34 being the 24W21A and onward, which is this version, uh, but I am using 1.21. But without further ado, let's just get on to the actual tutorial bit. First things first that you want to do is you're going to right click your desktop and you're going to click new, click folder, and you can name this whatever you want. This is going to be your resource pack folder. So we're going to call this um, testing texture pack folder. Now that we got our name, we can open it up and there are three things that you can put in this folder and there are two that are required to be in this folder. First things is a new folder called assets. And then we're going to create a new text document right down here. And we're going to call this pack and then change the format to MC meta. And yes, we want to change it. Now, if you do say if it does change and it says the type is a dot text folder, what you want to do is you're going to click view, click show and click file name extensions. This will show you the file again extension. So you can see that I turned it off and dot MC meta is no longer there. So I'm going to enable that back on. All right, now it's back on. And what we're going to do now is actually we're going to open the dot uh, the pack.mc meta file. Okay, open on my other desktop. So we're going to drag it over here. Now we're going to open the, um, you know, the Minecraft wiki. And we're going to scroll all the way down to where it says creating a dot mc uh, meta file. We're going to click that. And we're just going to click and drag and copy this. You can control C it and it'll still work minimize this and we're going to control v and there we go now before we exit out we're going to go back into the uh, wiki and we're going to look for the value pack format so this will tell the game what version it's for so we're going to look down and today we're going to be using 34 which is for again 24 w21a and onward meaning it's for you know versions like 1.21 we're going to remember 34 minimize this and replace the 22 with a 34. You can change the description if you'd like. What this really does is when you open it to your resource pack folder right here into the game, you can see that there's a description right there, such as fresh animation eyes or glass stone things, things like that. But you can change the description however you'd like. So we're gonna call this uh, Manny Queso is the best. You should subscribe. I'm going to believe I spelled that right for real, for real. There we go. And we're going to press file and press save. And then we can just close it out. Now, just to make sure, click it back open and it should be that still. So we can close this again. And now if you want to make a custom icon, such as all of these right here, you can make a custom icon. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to make, you're going to put in a a square image and it kind of does have to be a square image for example let's go find an image that i can use for example okay i got an image for example i got the queso textures logo and all we're gonna do is we're gonna drag in the image rename it to pack here we go queso textures image close that out and all this does is again makes a custom icon and if you do not do a pack dot uh, png or an icon for your texture pack it will automatically choose one for you being the cobblestone uh, block texture and you can see that the mojang already like you know default some like high contrast is this block right here programmer art is the default dirt and default is the grass block but if you do not put in a pack icon it will be a cobblestone block so now that we got the first 
uh, things at the way, we can go into the assets folder. You're going to click new and we're going to call this Minecraft and we're going to go into the Minecraft folder. And depending on what your texture pack is, it can be a lot of different subfolders right in here. Again, the wiki discusses a lot further than what I'm going to do. I'm discussing the basics around it. So we can scroll all the way down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see what we can put in here. I couldn't really find a little bit in depth tutorial, but again, the wiki is a really good source for this. And you can see that it's already teaching you how to do some basic things like how to um, texture or retexture the creeper using this method such as the assets, Minecraft, textures, entity, creeper, and then where you can find the creeper.png file. Inside Minecraft, create a folder called textures. Inside textures, create a folder called entity. Inside entity, create a folder called creeper. And then copy the creeper from the texture vanilla uh, to the creeper file. And there we go. So now we have the Minecraft folder. Let's say let's edit the sponge texture for the day. If you want to make a new model, again, these are the folders that you can use, such as the model folder. This will be the models and where you put the .json files, all that stuff. But you're going to need two new subfolders for models as there is two, such as uh, item models and block models. So if you're doing a, a new texture model, we're going to do model and then we're going to call this item and put a new one called block. But in today's tutorial, I'm not going to be showing you how to do um, modelings today as we're not using Blockbench. All right, so I knew I made a mistake somewhere, but when you're making the model folder, it's actually called models with an S at the end. But these two are the same, so block and item. Now, let's say you wanted to create a texture. Let's, let's do a new texture folder. So we're going to call this textures. And there are several many different texture folders. So what you can do, let's say we're editing the sponge block today. So we're going to do the block. And if you're doing an item, do item. If you're doing an entity, do entity. And again, if you want to learn more, check out the wiki, the sponge texture. We're going to open the block and we see that we have nothing in here. It is completely empty. Now, a way to get Minecraft textures is through, you know, getting it through the game or you can make an exam, a testing uh, Discord server and invite a bot called this one because I don't know how to pronounce it, but this bot will help you get textures. So let's say we want to find the sponge texture. We're going to do slash Minecraft resource pack and we can see that it's already, you know, auto filling and texture. And we're going to do sponge and let it load. There we go. We got sponge and we're going to click enter. Now, if you want the spun texture from a long time ago, you can do sponge and do version. Let's do 1.13. You can see that's the old sponge texture right there. Ignore that. But you can see that's the old sponge texture, but we're going to use a new one. So this one is just the large one. So you can see it really clear, but we're going to use this little teeny tiny one. And we're going to right click it. We're going to click save image. It should just be called sponge.png. We're going to put it right into the desktop save and let's assume it's saved. And there it is right in the corner of the desktop. And we're going to just put it right in here. Now, since we're not being, I'm not going to be really picky with this texture pack. Uh, I'm just going to, you can, you can use Photoshop. You can use GIMP. You can use any editing software that you want to make a new Minecraft texture. But since I'd like to do this a little bit quickly, so y'all can get right into making your own very texture pack. We're just going to open with paint. Yes, I'm going to use Microsoft Paint to show you how to make a new texture. Where's the zoom option? There we go. We're going to zoom right into it. So we can draw in the pixels. We're going to just draw a little. All right, there's our sponge texture. Now we're going to do save, exit. Now it's, it's updated. To see if it's updated, just click open to it. And if you see a change in it, yep, I see a change in it. I think we're done. And now we're going to close this out. And that's our example texture folder. Again, this was just to show how to structure a resource pack folder. This isn't really showing you how to make custom textures your own because I'm not a good Minecraft texture artist. I like to make models though. So now we're going to do, we're going to go right into the game, open pack folder, minimize Minecraft, move this out the, where, where the, where the, oh, there it is. And we're going to drag the testing folder. We're going to drag it right in there. Boom. Now we're going to open Minecraft again. And you can see right there, testing texture pack folder. Man, in case it was the best for real, you, uh, you, you should subscribe for real, for real. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. We're gonna click done and then we're gonna let it load. All right, now Minecraft is loaded back up. Let's full screen it so I can get a little bit more FPS. Let's get into a house so I can also get a little bit more FPS. Now we're in a house. You don't have to be in the house for this. We're gonna look up the sponge and you can see there's a sponge. You got a little face, got that droopy egg eye. And yeah, you can see that that texture pack folder worked. Now, if you do update the texture while the game is running, for example, like so, let's say you went all the way back into the folder while the game is open. You went to the textures folder, you went to the blocks folder, and then you right click this or you opened it with your editing software. Let's say paint. Now, let's say you made a change. Let's let's say you made him made him sad. Yeah, you made him you, you made him sad because he exists now. Oh, look at that. He's sad. He's got tears going down the eyes. We saved it. We exit. And now the updated texture is there but if we go back into the minecraft it's not there so what you can do you can do uh f3 t and it should reload your textures right then and there and there you go now he's sad because you updated his textures maybe he liked his textures before all right thanks for watching this video if you did enjoy please leave a like and subscribe and also maybe share with your friends maybe they want to make texture packs too and maybe y'all can put it in a combined server where y'all made excellent world creations and y'all want custom textures for them too so again this was just to show you on how to structure a texture pack folder not a really in-depth way on how to make custom textures as you can see my, my texturing isn't good at all but it is to show you a good understanding on how to use a texture pack folder and how to re you know properly reload it troubleshoot it in the game if you need it now if this doesn't work and you would like some help Feel free to comment and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. Or you can try to join my Discord server, which will be in the description right below. And I should be able to help you right there in the Blockbench Questions channel. So thank you for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care.